Last week, Oxford-based company First Light Fusion recorded the world's first ever nuclear fusion event using a projectile fusion approach. Nuclear fusion, the energy which fires the hydrogen bomb and the sun. Could this be the pot of gold waiting at the end of the rainbow to provide energy which is cheap, clean, and inexhaustible? Fusion is in the news a lot at the moment. What's actually going on here? Is this really a breakthrough or is this just more blowing the horn to attract more funding? I wanna take a look a little bit deeper and see what's actually going on. I'm gonna break this into three parts. Number one, what is Fusion and why is First Light's approach so interesting? Number two, how does their system actually work? And number three, what happens next? Fusion is the same process that happens in stars. It's been dubbed for a very long time as the holy grail energy source. It occurs when atoms are pushed so close together that they spontaneously fuse into one, releasing a huge amount of energy, typically as heat. By comparison to fusion, our nuclear reactors at the moment use a process called fission. Rather than bringing atoms together, they split heavier atoms apart. The unfortunate consequence of this process is that it produces a lot of radioactive material as a byproduct. Fusion technically produces a small amount of radioactive material, but it's incredibly short lived compared to the long lifetime radioactive material that is produced by fission. So fusion ultimately is seen as the perfect clean energy source. However, the energy requirements for fusion to actually happen are unbelievably high. You have to be at more than 100 million Kelvin to achieve it, which is typically quite a lot hotter than the sun. If we wanna recreate that process here on Earth, our ability to efficiently achieve fusion needs to be much higher. There are a few different types of approaches to try and achieve fusion. One that you've probably heard about and seen pictures of probably, is something called magnetic confinement fusion, where superconducting magnets are used to squeeze the ions close enough together to cause them to go into a process of fusion. This is different to the approach that First Light is trying to take. What they're developing is something called projectile fusion, which is in a category of fusion approaches called inertial fusion. Inertial fusion is typically a pulsed process, like an internal combustion engine. You take a small amount of fuel, inject it in, and ignite it to make it burn. I've covered the most popular approach to this inertial fusion here in this video at the National Ignition Facility, which uses incredibly powerful and as a consequence, incredibly complicated lasers as the spark to trigger this reaction. But First Light's fusion approach seems to be, at least on the surface level, a much simpler way of achieving fusion. They use an exceptionally high velocity projectile fired at a fuel source. And this actually isn't too different to how the hydrogen bomb works. The projectile is fired at an incredibly high speed and impacts a target that contains the fusion fuel. The target must focus that energy of the projectile and cause it to implode the fuel to the temperature and density needed to make it fuse. The approach that First Light are taking, I think is interesting because they self-report their mission as trying to solve the problem of fusion with the simplest machine possible because it's okay to be able to do fusion in a lab setting one time, but it's only really useful to us if the solution is scalable and if the solution is cheap. So that it can be used to provide what they refer to as the base load of our current energy requirements, which essentially is replacing the current electrical grid that we have. This will be used ultimately to complement things like renewable energy sources, which work fantastically, but something like solar obviously doesn't work at night. You need battery storage. There's probably always gonna be a gap in energy that we will need a grid to service. So how does the system actually work? First Light's journey into their new method for fusion started inspired by nature, by a small creature called the pistol shrimp. The pistol shrimp has an oversized claw which it can click shut at very high speed. The motion is so fast that it launches a shock wave into the water and stresses it so much that it rips apart and forms a bubble. The vapor inside though is heated to tens of thousands of degrees and emits a bright flash of light. This in slightly simplified terms is essentially First Light's approach. Projectile fusion has been considered for a very long time, but often thought that the required velocity to achieve it would fundamentally be too high. First Light is aiming to reduce that requirement by building a special type of fuel target technology. The targets that they use have a built-in amplifier that boosts the pressure generated by the impact of the projectile and makes sure it's delivered into a much higher pressure zone into the fuel. 
The amplifier serves to create convergence. Whilst the initial impact only comes from a single side, the fuel is squashed from many directions, and this is crucial for reaching the required final density to ignite the fusion process. The incredible density and pressure from the amplified impact compresses the fuel contained in the target enough for it to undergo fusion. And due to the design of their amplification within their fuel sources, First Light is hoping to reduce that required projectile velocity. At the moment from reading around the subject, it seems like First Light is working on two kind of parallel systems. Their successful fusion experiment results were conducted on something that they refer to as BFG, or Big Friendly Gun, uh, which fires a projectile using good old fashioned gunpowder to reach a projectile speed of about 6.5 kilometers per second directed into that fuel target. Now this obviously is awesome and it's a world first demonstration for this technique of being able to achieve fusion, but at the moment this is just a lab setup. The energy from that fusion event wasn't actually captured in any way that is useful, but First Light are working on a system in parallel called Machine 3 or M3, which they're hoping will become the viable commercial approach to actually delivering this fusion technology. When I reached out to First Light CEO Nick on Twitter, he confirmed that BFG was primarily for testing the fuel targets so that they could optimize their construction, while Machine 3 was designed to be something approaching a proper commercial system. Machine 3, rather than using gunpowder like BFG, uses an electromagnetic launcher, something equivalent to a railgun, capable of firing a copper projectile that's about 10 millimeters in diameter, one millimeter in thickness, at about 20 to 30 kilometers per second, twice the escape velocity of the Earth. And that acceleration is delivered in about five millimeters. Within the context of a power plant application, that target fuel source would be dropped into a reaction chamber and the projectile would be launched downward through the same entranceway to catch up with it at just the right moment to strike it at the heart of the fusion chamber. From some of the initial interviews I was listening to, it sounds like they would look to repeat this process about every five seconds. And during the fusion event, about four fifths of that heat energy that is released goes into the neutrons that are fired out of the process. And here, First Light is looking to use something called a liquid lithium coolant to absorb those neutrons and capture the heat, to pipe the heated liquid into essentially a steam engine in order to then generate electricity, which I find awesome. Although this is at the end of the day, something that on the front end is an artificial star, at the back end, it's just a good old fashioned steam engine because sometimes simpler is better. This is what the big news is about, but I guess what happens next? And is this thing actually gonna work? Ultimately, I would say there's still a huge amount of science and engineering to be done, but this technique and the team behind it do seem laser focused, or I guess projectile focused on the right things. Delivering something that is commercially viable in the cheapest and easiest way possible to simplify an otherwise incredibly difficult challenge. First Light, from a lot of angles that I've looked at them, have taken very sensible commercial steps. Things like replacing the lasers with just gas guns to swap out the precious metals required in some other systems fuel sources for something that is a little bit easier and cheaper to manufacture. Overall, I've seen some estimates that this system could be about a thousand times cheaper than other approaches to achieving fusion. I think the main benefit behind it is this approach to fusion is something that we've already achieved. The physics behind it is much simpler. Now, I would say when I did see these guys back in 2019, there was no mention of this BFG, this big friendly gun. Uh, it may have been, I don't know, created to kind of decouple that fuel target design process from the process of building a commercial, commercially viable device. If that's so, I think that makes a lot of sense. Potentially it was really complicated to try and improve the fuel design whilst also building it into a system that they thought might work. I would at this point be really interested to see what their ultimate business model is. And if they are actually going to be going out to try and deliver that front end reactor design, or if they're building towards more of just supplying the fuel source and requiring others to build that kind of front end fusion reactor. Regardless of their approach, I think if they can make this core process deliverable and achievable, the majority of the rest of the power plant is actually quite easy to produce with a lot of existing technology that we already have. So in theory, this approach could have a really rapid, rapid trajectory to towards commercial fusion. What does that actually mean? It probably means something more like 10 years, but hey, the alternative is something more like 30 years. 
So that is a little bit of a quicker timeline. So what are the next steps? The plan for the next steps are delivering a gain experiment to show that the system can get more energy out than is put into it. This is always a bit of a contentious issue because a lot of science reporting doesn't measure this approach fairly, uh, but that is the topic of another video. First light at the moment looks like it's aiming towards delivering a pilot plant to produce about 150 megawatt of electricity at a price point that is less than a billion dollars and aiming to deliver this somewhere in the early 2030s. I think there's a lot of interesting aspects going on here. I think purposefully moving into a regime where the physics is easier to solve, where the system is easier to build, is really sensible. Going back to those first principles and saying, hey, what do we actually need to do to achieve this goal is a good kind of mental process that I haven't seen a lot of the other fusion approaches taking. But what do you think? Are we finally 10 years away from fusion rather than 30 years away? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like or a comment. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.